I have a question, Moda, about destiny. Um, my life flowed quite smoothly up until two years ago when my husband was diagnosed with dementia. And from that moment, it's like I I'm in a completely different life. Things have changed so much. Um, I really have been put in the doer mode because before that we shared things around the house and things. And now it's all my job to do all of it. And there's been a lot of grief and a lot of uh, resistance to it. And I'm just wondering why is this in my life? Is there something I am learning? I, I know I'm learning something from it, but is that part of, of destiny to um, help us learn things, help us become more centered? Um, I'm just wondering about that. Everything is your destiny. What is unfolding is your destiny. We think our destiny is something glorious, something special, or something that we really enjoy that's, that's yeah, pleasurable or I don't know. But your destiny is everything, including the tragedy, including the loss. You are interpreting that you've been pushed into the unwit unwillingly or unwittingly into the doer role. But remember, it's not what you do or don't do. It's not the fact that you need to attend to your husband and do the tasks that he would have done before. It's the place from which that is done. If it's done with kindness and willingness, it doesn't detract from your beingness. Love, the light of love, the light of being flows into everything, including taking care of the one who is sick. What more beautiful action there can be in this life than to take care of that that needs to be taken care of, whether it's a child or a puppy or a husband who's got dementia. But if you see it as a punishment and that your life's taken a wrong turn, then you will be resentful. Then you will be resistant. I, I don't see it as a punishment, but I'm just wondering why. <laughs> well, why not, my dear? Why not? It is Life includes all of it. Okay. But destiny, these are things that come into your life that uh, they just come into your life. They're there. That's and right, because you're not the doer. You're not the doer. Life unfolds okay, in how, ways. What causes it to un unfold in certain ways? Everyone has things that happen to them that you know are painful and things, but is there a reason why we go through these things in our life? On one level, there is absolutely no reason. Why does the leaf fall off the tree? Why does this flower bloom for 10 days, but the other one blooms for one minute? Why? Why does anything in the world of form arise as it does? Again, that's the mystery. It's not of our doing. We look for meaning. We look for cosmic meaning. We look for karmic meaning. Ultimately, the purpose is to open, to, open you up to the light of beingness in everything. Everything, including the way it appears and doesn't, you know, doesn't appear, including the rise and fall of form, in, including the, everything is impermanent. Why does it appear? Because that flower blooms as a rose and that one blooms as a daffodil. One is not better than the other. Why? Because it is, because all forms, all possibilities, all manifestations, and perhaps there's a certain uh, patterning uh, or pattern that emerges through a female form, <laughs> a male form, uh, this particular individuation at this time in this place. Everything has a sacred geometry. This is your sacred geometry. This is how it's unfolding. And all we can do is not question the meaning of it, 
but actually surrender to that unfoldment as it is. That's the true meaning or invitation of it. And I know it's not satisfying to the mind. So this, this is life. This, everything that, life includes everything. <laughs> this certainly is does. Life. And yes. as we go through life, we are opening and unfolding and becoming more centered, uh, more accepting. If you choose to, if you choose to, (laughs) everything is temporary. Your life is temporary. The, The pattern of your life with all its details and tragedies and and beauties and success, all of it, everything you have, everything you don't have, everything that's been missed out or everything that's been received, that whole thing is temporary. It's just one flower blooming and lots of millions, zillions, quadrillions of flowers are blooming, rising and falling all the time. Yeah. Why? Why not? Because this is the way that consciousness becomes conscious of itself through you, through me, through this, through that. It becomes conscious of itself. What does that mean? It comes to know beingness, irrespective of the shape of its life the form, that which is deeper. That's how you come to know it. And yes, of course, to know it is to come to deep acceptance. To know it is to come to presence and openness. To know it is to surrender to the bliss of what is, even if that bliss or even if that what is seems to be a a loss or a tragedy or a impediment. It's not. Everything is a doorway to this. This is consciousness evolving through you. That's your only purpose. That's my only purpose. The purpose of existence is to know itself through form, to know its true nature through form. Now, flowers haven't evolved to the place of self-knowing. Human beings have, and they usually get it wrong. (laughs) Not wrong, but they miss the mark. They believe they are the form. But we have the capacity to know ourselves as that which is beyond form. And then you are not attached to the form. (laughs) 